Brand new tier list looking at the biggest and most exciting pop songs of the 2000s. If you've been keeping up with this series that I've had ongoing for a while now, you will have seen the likes of the 80s being touched on, or rap albums from the 2010s and the 2000s, or even pop albums from the 2000s and 2010s. Well, this time we're looking at 2000s pop songs. Hopefully, there's a bit of nostalgia here for you today, because if you're around my age-ish, ish, 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 you will have grown up during this era, and these tracks will have been your childhood, and there will be some kind of extra layers of attachment that you'll have to some of these songs too, so that'll be pretty great to see. And of course, as always, complete the tier list yourself. I will share it on Twitter. Um, it'll be in the uh, description box as well. You can click the link, make your own, tell me it, share it with me all over on the social medias and whatnot. And yeah, I would love to see a conversation. The rap 2000s tier list did really well. Like lots of people were sharing that my way. It was really great to see lots of people getting involved in that one. So I want to see the same for this one too. Just like with the 80s, I've picked 50 songs. So it was very hard to narrow it down to just 50. There will be a lot of songs that you will think, why is this not here? Why is that not here? I can't include absolutely everything. I've also included a few curveballs as well as I like to do. This is not real music we're talking about here. We do things a little differently, but the vast majority of these songs are going to be massive hits. It's probably going to be a bit UK suede as well, because like a lot of these hits will be from my own perspective as well. So there will be some that may be American or anywhere else, wherever you're from, may not recognize, but you might get some new recommendations from this video somehow, which is pretty cool. So yeah, please subscribe, check out my Patreon as well if you wanna to donate to me and get your own requests for videos like this in the future and enjoy the video. Let's just get on with it now. Speaking of 50, we're starting with 50 himself with In The Club, the uh, massive smash hit the era where pop and rap really began to fuse together in a way that we hadn't really seen quite the same before. Uh, there was some of that in the 90s, obviously, but I think it really came into its own in the 2000s and kind of catapulted rap to where it is today, honestly. Uh, but yeah, 50 Cent in the Club, kind of one of those songs for me I like. Like anything above C, C and above is going to be I like, and then the bottom two are going to be that I don't like, but C is like mild enjoyment. I do think maybe this deserves to be higher, but I think it's one of those songs for me where it's like the chorus is really fun and catchy and you sing along to it and you know the words instantaneously, but the rest of the track I'm just not really that engaged with, honestly. It's got a great beat, uh, 50 sounds great on it. Uh, but yeah, I uh, kind of like, it's not on this list and it could have easily been on this list, but Hot In Here by Nelly's the same, where that beat is great, the chorus is great, but then once the verses come in, I'm just not that engaged. And for a, a rap fan that I am, I want to be engaged with the rapping and I'm kind of not. It's kind of just doesn't, it doesn't combine the best of both worlds for me, in my opinion. Already starting with a bit of a hot take. I don't think there's going to be that many on this, um, but yeah, <laughs> um, Aaliyah. More than a woman? Strain in the S tier, man. Look, I'm going to say it right now. I think we've hit a point where obviously people in the know of Aaliyah will know how good she is and how good more than a woman is. Don't, don't get it twisted. But I think we've hit a point where the mainstream have forgotten this song. I tend to play it around people or I tend to mention it to people and they just don't seem to remember it. And this was a huge hit in America and the US. Uh, America and the US? What the hell? The US and the UK across all... European countries, this was massive, and yet people don't seem to remember it, but this song is excellent. I'm keeping it in S, I'm standing by it. It is so good. Aaliyah's vocals are fantastic. The instrumentation is epic as well. It just sounds really dramatic and over the top, but it's so, so bloody good. This is what I was saying with like UK-based stuff, because the next one is All Saints Pure Shores. Don't think this was quite as big in other countries, but they were huge in the UK. And this song, honestly, doesn't really sound like a song that's going to be a massive hit, but it, it is really, really good. Like, it's really dreamy, it's really soft, it's really airy, and just a really lovely, lis like, lovely listen of a song. But it also is quite catchy as well. Yeah, I really like this song. Uh, a bit of a one that I didn't realise how good it was until I went back to it about a year ago-ish. I went back to it and I was like, actually, this has aged really nicely. Kind of sounds like something like, like, um, I guess some, um, like, 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 you know, remember like bands from like the 90s, like uh, down tempo bands like Air or maybe something like Roiksop, like they would have produced something like this. It's really odd to see it be such a big hit and sound like this, but I'm all for it. Uh, American Boy... 
Estelle Kanye. It's just iconic. The the verses are just so iconic at this point. Not quite S, I think, probably because I've heard it that much now that it's war for me a little bit, but it is just still so good. Estelle really deserved more than just this one song being a hit. Like, I haven't heard much of her other music, which, you know, probably speaks to her, why she is a one-hit wonder, I suppose. Uh, but you can't make a song this good and then just disappear. Like, she must have dropped more music. Her features on Flower Boy as well were really good too, like her, her contribution to that album. Uh, yeah, really strange that we didn't get more from her. But the Kanye verse is super quotable. Yeah, it's, it, this song is just fantastic. Uh, One Thing by Emery. Amory, again, is also going in A. People always likened it to Beyonce. I'm pretty sure there's a reason why this song came out at a similar time. Beyonce was popping off. You see it in trends when one artist starts sounding like this. The industry just jump on anything else that sounds even slightly similar and just really pushes it super hard. And of course, you end up getting this, which at the time, as good as anything Beyonce put out, I'm not even going to lie to you, man. This is fantastic, this track. The drums sound friggin' great. Um, yeah, again, similar to Stealth, One Hit Wonder, probably deserve more. The album, I have heard that album actually. I can report back to you and say that is a very good album too. Obviously, one thing is the best song on it. But it's a very good album. Another S for me, Amy Winehouse. I wanted to stray away from her obvious hits with this one because I just kind of wanted to gush over how much I like You Know I'm No Good um, because it doesn't really seem to get talked about as much. You obviously know Rehab, you know Back to Black, you know Tears Dry, Don't Dry on Their Own. Like These are really iconic, well-known songs. But this one's quite a little bit lesser known from the same album that was super iconic. And yeah, I think the song is absolutely stellar. The production is outrageously good. And by the way, if you didn't know this, I found out recently um, from somebody that told me on Twitter, I can't remember who it was actually, but shout out to you. Uh, I, it, it, it's a produced by the same people that are behind, you know, Sharon Jones and the Dat Kings. And when I found that out, I was like, there's no wonder this sounds as good as it does the production is insane like it is really really top notch really fantastic stuff classic soulful vibes she had her influences really clear people kind of forget how obvious her influences were to be honest with you but she wore them so well and this track is stellar one of the best of the 2000s for me easily another one hit wonder we're, we're flying through these daniel powder's bad day this song is hilarious, man. Like, it is the most lowest common denominator song you could ever make. It's like the 2000s version of Fight Song by Rachel Platten. Like, it is so obviously catering towards that demographic that just need that one uh, empowering track that they need to uh, lift their spirits uh, because they're having a bad day. Have you ever had a bad day? I've had a bad day. How about we play the song Bad Day and let's all relate to it because it's so relatable. But it's just like, why? I mean, the chorus isn't even that catchy or anything. The production sounds really stale and 2000s inspired. Like, yeah, it just, just sounds like of its time. I don't even think today you could get a song like this making its way into the charts, really. I think we were just at a time where music was so different. The accessibility towards different styles of music and genres was just totally nowhere near to what, to what it is today. And yeah, I, I think it really is of its time. Meet Me Halfway, the first F of this list. I know people that really like this song and whenever they bring up Black Eyed Peas they go, I like that song though. But I'm telling you right now, go back to it. I don't think you've heard this song in quite a while. I don't think you have, my friends. I think you're misremembering what this song sounds like because the verses are like atrocious. Like I'm not even going overboard or exaggerating here. Like the verses are really bad. I don't think you remember how bad they are. Will I Am sounds awful. There's that like kind of, they, they were in that era where they were doing that kind of like auto-tune robotic voice, you know, like on Boom Boom Pow, which by the way, Boom Boom Pow straight in this tier as well, if it were on this list. Um, but yeah, it really sounds atrocious. One of the craziest things about it as well is that in the verses, there's a sample of Yeah Yeah Yeah's maps. 
listen to it. You will hear it. when If you didn't know that was there, you will hear it now Yeah, I've mentioned it. Seriously, a bad song. The chorus is fine. Fergie's fine. Like, she always was pretty good as a vocalist. Like, there's no denying that. Um, she carries the track into a better place. But it's not good enough to save the song. Like, that chorus is nowhere near that good to, for it to have been a big hit. But yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not with this song, man. I, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. Well, we're also on the topic of Black Eyed Peas, though. I'll put Where Is The Love in C tier. I actually think I, uh, I think for a song that's like super preachy and super cringe in a lot of ways, it actually has, you know, aged quite well. Like, um, again, though, another weird little thing that people don't seem to realize, Justin Timblake's on this track. Like, a lot of people thought that was Fergie on the chorus, but no, that's JT. He puts in a pretty good chorus actually yeah it's it's a very like simplistic we need to kind of get together let's talk about things and the issues in the world without being too sp specific to you know reference any one thing we'll just kind of be you know very general with it and it's it, it's actually okay for what it is this song could have easily been a lot worse this next pick is just essentially about saving face uh, because i didn't include this in my beyonce um Top 10 songs, and I totally forgot about how good it is, but Deja Vu with Jay-Z. This is so good. This should have been in that video. I will regret and say that that video has not aged the best because I missed out this song. This should be in the top 10 best Beyonce songs ever because it's so bloody good. The energy, the beat, it's all so enjoyable and so infectious. And uh, yeah, I, I actually didn't include any other Beyonce songs for this reason. I just wanted to talk about this one because I've talked a lot about Beyonce on this channel before. I've raved about her hits. There's a lot of good hits from this era that could all be in A or maybe even like in B, that kind of area. They're all very good. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to mention this one because it doesn't get talked about as much and it is fantastic. I'm also putting Toxic in A too. Uh, probably the highest of the A's. Could easily be an S. It kind of is that level of brilliance. Um, but yeah, Britney in this era was kind of killing it. There's loads of good songs like Break the Ice uh, from the album that came a bit later on than this. Uh, that's a great track too. But yeah, Toxic, that sample, the really nicheness of that sample is crazy and how it turned into just such a, uh, a dramatic, really uh, huge sounding song. And uh, yeah, she's got so much charisma coming through on this track too. Uh, Fill Me In by Craig David. A bit of a personal favourite here. I think I'm probably going a bit overboard by putting it in S, but I love this track, man. I absolutely love this track. I think the kind of conversational storytelling aspect of it is great. The two-step garage type beat is great too. I love that kind of stuff, especially from this era. It's, oh, it's like sunship and stuff. All of it. And Craig David was super inspired by that type of stuff to create the music that he did here. Wookie too, by the way. Wookie is so good. Um, yeah, and Craig David taking those inspirations, turning it into a bit more of a pop sound. Really killed it. The chorus is so good. Yeah, one that I think is aged better than people realise. I'd go back to this one if you've not heard it in some time bit more of a UK based one as I've already said but yeah for sure really good stuff here one more time by Daft Punk I'm gonna go B I think that's fair I think one more time is a really good track there's a lot of hits from this era from Daft Punk as well from Discovery lots of tracks made it into the charts um yeah and it, it's a really good track really um just like really euphoric and like awe-inspiring like even though the lyrics are basically copied and pasted across the whole song it never really gets boring they're really teetering on the lines of like going overly repetitive which is one of my issues with discovery as a whole actually i think there are tracks that are super repetitive and get really redundant quickly but this one doesn't it's so bloody good i'm gonna put gotta get through this in a this is a great tune again taking inspiration from like the craig david sounds of like you know two-step garage um really kind of popular in this era in the uk i don't know how big this song was in anywhere else but it was huge over here um yeah it's a it's a it's a, it's a fantastic song uh dance with me dizzy rascal and calvin harris calvin harris singing on this track he has the hook this track super super great so fun so infectious, so catchy. Dizzy Rascal's just got so much personality oozing on this track. Kind of what I was saying before a little bit with like 50 Cent where the verses are a little bit boring. or Not boring, but just get a bit stale, I guess. 
Whereas this, Dizzy Rascal does not let up the whole way through. He's just full of so many quotable lines. Talking about your Jack Jones. Yeah, it's, it's so good. So good. And the chrome beat as well. Kind of, kind of getting a, yeah, kind of forgotten about how good that chrome beat is too. Okay, Feel Good Ink. Going in S. Yeah, I'm going in S. I think, I think Feel Good Ink is, is that good. Um, yeah, really fantastic track. Really weird mismatch of genres that really shouldn't work. De La Soul being on a Gorilla song and being on like a massive hit song is kind of wild, really, especially in the 2000s when it's like well over a decade past their peak years. It's, it's mad to think this even happened, but it is aged so bloody well. Um, yeah, that laugh as well at the start is super iconic. I still see people like making like TikToks of like that laugh or somebody doing a laugh that sounds like it and then kind of lacing it into the Feel Good Ink track. It, 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 yeah, it's so bloody good. Oh, it's a bit of a legendary one next though, my friends. Low by Flowrider. Yeah, it, it's going to be, it's going to be. It, it probably could be S actually. It could be any of them. It could be terrible. It could be amazing. It's one of those songs that is just something that has been captured in a way that we've never really seen before. Flowrider had the hits, my friends. Flowrider had the hits. Kate Nash Foundation. It's going to go in A for this as well. Got a lot of A's, actually. But I think it's a great track. I really do. Um, again, very British, probably UK-based in a way that some people outside the UK might not even know what this is. But this was huge in the UK. Really came through in an era where there were lots of, like, sassy British white ladies <laughs> coming through with, like, um, no shits given, like really, really like cutthroat and just had a lot of attitude and just came through with really some lots of like funny lyrical like motifs and just didn't really hold back and it just came through with lots of personality. Um, yeah, the accent coming through on this track is just so funny as well. Like it's so strong and it's so in your face. Um, yeah, it, it, it was really good to see this kind of era of songs come through in the way that it did. Uh, Nas Walkie Crazy, I kind of feel like there's no real debate with this one, honestly. There's not really anything uh, questionable about it being an S. Like, the only thing I guess you could say was that it was overplayed um, in a way that they actually ended up taking it off iTunes themselves, I think it was. Or was iTunes even a thing back then? They took it off some digital download website. They were like... This has gone too far. This has been number one for friggin' ages. And apparently they took the ownership of taking it off, like, as a, as a, as a, as a possibility to even purchase. Um, because they were just like, we don't want it to be, like, you know, absolutely taking over everything we do. Like, we make more than just this music and stuff like that. I think there was a lot of background to it. If that story is even true, that's what I've heard anyway. But yeah, uh, fantastic song. Love the way that each chorus flips it. Um, the beat is great. Danger Mouse's production is crazy. <laughs> crazy. And uh, yeah, CeeLo Green just has those vocals, you know, has those instantaneous recognizable vocals that just lure you in. Another F for me, I'm going, hey there, Delilah. It's not as bad as Meet Me Halfway, though. Um, oh my God. Why did we have this era of like really, really lame dudes with acoustic guitars just making really redundant tracks that had nothing really to say it's not even like sweet it's not even like sentimental like it's just so boring like it's such a boring song oh my god ah oh, that line where he's like making history like i do what history did you make me what did, where did you go? You didn't make any other songs. What the hell? You didn't make history. Get the hell out of here. Right. Hey, ya, outcast. I'm going to go A. I'm going to go A. I'm sort of teetering on this track because I think for me personally, I've just heard it a little bit too much now. Like the, 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 it is so good though. It is actually like ridiculously good, but I think like I've overplayed it for myself. Like I used to listen to this song all the time, not even just like because I heard it on the radio. I'd play it myself all the time. I just loved it. But I think personally, I've just gone a bit too far with it, you know? Outcasts are incredible. Andre's verses on this are fantastic. The fact that it's basically like, you know, a really sad song being put into an upbeat, like exciting, fun, 
track is just really hilarious how people didn't really pick up on that for a long time they just thought it was a fun little track um but the the video is great as well yeah there's a lot to love about this song um just think i've played it a little bit too much for myself um jason mraz i'm yours get the ah get it out of here get it out of here this might be even worse than hey there delilah get it no, no, no. Jamelia Superstar. This is a fun little bop, you know. I'm going to put it in B. In fact, I'm going to put it in the highest of the Bs. It's actually a cover, though. It's actually a cover. I only found that out the other day when I was putting this tier list together. Um, it is only a cover. It's a cover. She didn't make this song, but I listened to the original. Oh, my God. The original is pretty good, by the way, but the amount of personality Jamelia brings to this song, it just elevated it so high. You can see why this ended up being the hit for sure. Not that the cover, the, the original is bad. It really isn't. But just for what Jamelia brought to the track. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're entering all time territory now, my friends. Jamiroquai, little L. Oh, what a track. Putting it straight at the top of the S's. Love this track. This is like the cleanest song you will ever hear. The production, the space between the the the, the notes and the vocals. Oh, it's just so immaculate. It's so immaculate. The groove, the the singing. Oh, Jamil Cry had the hits, man. Another thing similar to like Aaliyah, where it's like I think the main population, the main public, have just forgotten how frigging good this shit was. Uh, they had loads of good songs. Little L is probably their best ever, though. I uh, love Jamiroquai, man. They're so good. Uh, this track, yeah, was, was, again, a hit, but one that I think people aren't really thinking about as much anymore. Cry Me A River by JT. I included this one because I think it is quite obviously, like, the biggest of the bunch. Um, it's not one I absolutely love, though. I could have included other ones, like um, Rock Your Body. Or Like I Love You, which is probably my favourite track of his ever. Um, yeah, the one with T.I. Uh, my Love. So don't give away my love. So don't give away my love. That's a good track too. There lots of good JT songs. Uh, this was obviously the one about Britney, I think. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Um, the vocals are pretty impressive on it too. Yeah, it's, 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 a decent, it's a decent song, you know, you know, you know. Uh, Move Your Feet by Junior Senior, going a bit overboard here, but I'm putting it straight Ness. This is the one for me where it's like nostalgia has absolutely carried my love for this song. Like it is so friggin' good. And memories of listening to this when I was a kid, it's just, it's so good. It is just such a, a fun, carefree, absolutely bombastic in your face pop tune that just doesn't hold back at all it pulls no punches ah oh, it's it's so friggin good uh heartless by kanye i've got a couple of kanye tracks actually i went with like the obvious big big hits incredible song honestly like it really is a really fantastic song um just really poured out the emotions kind of brought in auto tune in a pretty clever way too Kanye changed the game with 808s and heartbreaks. So it's no denying that. 808, 808s and heartbreak, should I say. Uh, there's no denying that. And it's actually aged incredibly well too. Uh, I don't love the whole album, but I love this track. And similarly with Stronger too. Um, I mean, you know, the Daft Punk sample is worked in really cleverly. Um, I love Graduation, by the way. It's one of my favorite Kanye albums for sure. But yeah, for me, I think... Um, it's a song that isn't a highlight on graduation, but it absolutely is still very good. Like it, it's bottom tier for me. It's not as bad as Drunken Hot Girls, obviously, but it's not as strong as some of the other tracks. I would have much preferred to see like Can't Tell Me Nothing be a hit. Um, you know, tracks like Flashing Lights, like some tracks from there would be straight in the S tier, but this was obviously the biggest track. And the glasses, there was a really cool iconic look to it that really had a game-changing feel about it and of course something i found out recently as well timberland really helped create this song and make it what it is like he was like look you got to change the drum beat and it yeah if you watch the video it's really cool to see like it sounds way different and then timberland's kind of like nah make it sound like this and it becomes what it is it's it's really cool 
love little things like that where you kind of see the the, the makings of the track a couple of kylie songs here uh, i'm gonna go with can't get you out of my head in the b tier i do love this track it didn't quite make my top 10 kylie songs if you remember that video that i did um it just missed out but maybe again overplay has kind of dimmed it for a little, little, a little bit for me but what hasn't been dimmed is love at first sight this is one of the best pop songs of all time it might be hard to beat this actually on this list this might end up being the top of the list when i think about it more and more uh, incredible track just so beautifully written in a really simple way like it's a really simple beautiful track like there isn't anything totally out of the ordinary with the lyrics but it is at the same time so beautiful yeah incredible song so so good we got lily allen similarly with kate nash that kind of attitude british attitude coming through um i actually think it should probably be a bit higher than some of these actually yeah smile great track the opening line is so funny she delivers lines in such a dry way um that i find still hilarious lots of songs from this era are very similar to like she's just really got a great sense of humor it's a shame that her music ended up getting a bit meh past like the 2010s but 2000s lily allen was just on something else it was, she was brilliant uh, a few emo hits coming up man and they probably aren't really the same as the rest of this list calling them pop or whatever probably seems a bit dishonest but i couldn't miss them out and I've got to go with In The End by Linkin Park, which I think is really high up, actually. Um, yeah, I'm going to go A, really high up on the A's. Did this on karaoke with Buffalo Staple. What a time that was. But um, yeah, as a song, I think it's brilliant. I think it combines that new metal era with a more of a pop, polished sound and does it excellently. And it's aged fantastically well. And then if we're going even more into the emo days of the 2000s. We've got to mention My Chemical Romance, a bit of an anomaly for this being a hit, but I'm going to go S. I think this song is as incredible as it was back when it came out. Like it, it is so brilliant. It kind of has that Bohemian Rhapsody feel of it, of just like having so many layers and so many, you know, moments that change up in such a cool way it builds into an incredible song like it starts off in a way that you wouldn't think it would end the way it does oh yeah there's lots of great things to say about it i absolutely love this track i think it's aged very well but like i say a bit of an anomaly really this is only here because of how emo ended up taking over like you wouldn't really think a song like this would be number one for a few weeks but it was um so yeah brilliant song i'm gonna go paper planes next by m.i.a I'm going to go B. I'm going to go B. I think um, a really smart track that incorporates elements that you wouldn't really expect, like the the cash register and the, the gunshots into a chorus. It's a little gimmicky, I will say that. I think that's why it doesn't quite go as high as it could be. But I think it's very clever and it has a lot to say. And MIA, again, similarly with like Lily Allen, you know, in those peak days, these artists had a lot to say and had a really interesting way to put it out there. But as time went on, their music just got a little bit meh, unfortunately. And speaking of Beddingfields, we got another one. We got Natasha Beddingfield, Unwritten. Kind of only recently realized how good this song is, you know. I'm going to put it in the A's. Just so, just so lovely, you know. So lovely. What a track. Um, Neo's Closer. I'm going to go B for Neo's Closer. I think that's a really good track. I think if we had a Utopia, he probably would have been the Chris Brown that ended up being the Chris Brown, you know? Like, he had all of that to him, that, like, Michael Jackson influence, the, the charisma, the dancing. The, it was all there, but Chris Brown just ended up being the one that took off, and Neo is, like, doing mass singer now and is barely relevant. So, yeah, it's kind of weird to see that he fell off the way he did. But again, similarly to Amory, you know, this album, oh, which, I, is it this album? One, one of the albums in the 2000s that I've listened to was really good. Like, it was a really good album. And uh, yeah, I think he deserved a bigger career than he got, to be honest with you. Okay, a couple of Nelly Furtado tracks next. Uh, Promiscuous, I'm going to go with B as well. Timbaland, Nelly, doing a bit of a duet. 
Timbaland is kind of terrible at singing, honestly, but it's a fun track um, that I still get a lot of enjoyment out. But for me, Say It Right, oh, this song is unbelievable. This song is unbelievable. I don't know what it is about it, but it just captures an essence that you can't quite find in other pop songs. My God, the melodies are incredible. I think the song is underrated as hell, man. I don't think people remember how good this song is. I know a lot of people would probably say Man Eater. I'd probably put Man Eater in B or A too, but yeah, Say It Right is something else. As you can see, it's been mostly positive, but I think my next one's going to be a bit of a hot take in that I don't really rate Poker Face that highly. I think it's fine. I think the chorus is really good, but I don't know, man. I, I, I think a lot of Gaga's hits are starting to really fizzle on me, to be honest with you. There's obviously great ones. There's obviously really good ones, but... The more time passes and the more I go back to some of her tracks that were huge, they're just not hitting the same way. And this track for a long time I used to think quite highly of, but nowadays, I don't know. Poker Face ain't all that for me, man. I don't really, I ain't feeling it like that. Um, I'm going to go Umbrella in B. I think it should be about there, yeah. Yeah, Umbrella's a good track. Kind of funny how the drum beat is basically ripped from like a generic default drum loop from like Apple Inc or something. It's just like they did nothing to it. Like if you listen to it, it's just it's just a beat that's looped over and over again. It's so funny how that ended up being a hit. But yeah, anyway, Umbrella's a good track. Um, I think though SOS is the one. This is the one that's going in S for me. There's a lot of S's. I, there's a lot of S's. I did not expect to see this many S's on this list. I'm not mad at it though, I'm okay with this. There might be a couple more on the way too, I'm not sure yet. We shall see, but yeah, that's, that's, that's a stellar song. Um, the Tainted Love sample I think is incorporated really well to the point where a lot of people don't even realise it's Tainted Love until you tell them. Um, it's a really, really sneaky in, uh, inclusion of a sample, but yeah, it's a, so lively that track. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Sean Kingston, Beautiful Girls. I'm going to put that in D as well. I've got to throw some in D. And uh, yeah, I, it's kind of funny, you know, looking back at it. Some of the lyrics he comes out with are just absolutely outrageous. But as a song, I don't enjoy it really. I'll sing all the words because obviously I will because it's a song everyone knows. But I don't think it's a good one. That Benny King Stand By Me sample though, what a sneaky sample that is. And I'm telling you right now, this guy probably doesn't have much money. That All of that money that they made from this song would have had to have gone to the royalty. Like they would have had to pay crazy royalties. I, I don't think he's very rich now, you know. I really don't see it. He didn't have many hits. And a song like that, how much would they have had to pay you know, Stand By Me is a, is already a classic staple song. I, I just, I can't imagine how much they had to pay them for that song. Anyway, maybe a hot take here, but I don't really rate Kings of Leon Sex on Fire. In fact, it might be the worst on this list. I don't know. It's maybe a bit harsh to say that. I just don't rate it, man. Uh, just like, it's like, I hate saying stuff like this because it sounds so pretentious. But do you know when something just sounds like, it's made for people that don't like the genre. Like people that don't like rock music probably like this song. I don't know, it sounds really pretentious, but do you get what I mean? Like it sounds like it's like, yeah, it's ravey, it's got a guitar and it's got drums and yeah. But like, it's just not a good rock song. Like the chorus is terrible. Like it's a terrible chorus. I, I really don't get it, man. But you can imagine like people getting drunk and being like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. It Wasn't Me by Shaggy. Kind of similar to Sean Kingston. Like, I'll sing all the words, but I don't like the song. I don't like it, really. It's just, like, it's funny the first time, but it's, like, it's just, I don't know. It's a, it's a bit cringe, you know? Shaggy ha gives off cringy energy, for sure. Yeah, My Angel? Nah, man. I've seen a lot of hate for Hips Don't Lie recently, but I think it's a bit of a banger. I like it. I think it's a good track. I think Shakira, for me, I've never been the biggest fan of Shakira, actually. I've done a few of her albums and I did not rate any of them at all. Uh, but the hits are the hits. Whenever, wherever, you know, hits don't lie. They're solid. You'll sing them. You'll have fun with them. Um, but yeah, otherwise, not the biggest Shakira fan. I may as well just speed through the last few now because we're coming towards the end. 
Uh, Kelly Clarkson, since you've been gone, I think goes in the B tier very nicely. I think it's a good track. I'm seeing, um, oh, this is actually getting a bit, here we go. Yeah, I think it's, I've, I've seen some interesting takes recently. I mean, I've seen it get in the top five of all time on Billboard, which I think is just ridiculous. I don't think it's a top five pop song ever, ever, in any world ever. But then I'm also seeing people like Fantano say it's bad. I'm like, what are you saying? What are you talking about? Can we just go a bit somewhere, you know, more reasonable? The truth lies somewhere in the middle sometimes. And I think that's, that's, that's this song. It's a, it's a good song, but it ain't that bad. But it ain't that good either. It's got a, it's got a bit of a fire to it that I like. I think Kelly's vocals were pretty killer. And she had some good tracks back in this era. Is she an albums artist? No, the albums aren't good. I won't say that. And were the hits later on pretty bad? Yeah. You know, yeah. Some of those hits later on. Strong. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger? No. But this track was good. This track was good. Okay, a few Sophie Alex Baxter songs. Oh, blah, 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 blah. We'll try that again. A few Sophie Ellis Baxter songs, which I am putting in S. Yeah, I'm putting them both in S. So, again, if you're not British... You might not fully recognise what these are, but Murder on the Dance Floor has some of the best vocal pop melodies of the 2000s for sure. That bridge is sensational, by the way. And the, the pre-chorus is like one of those weird moments where like the pre-chorus is better than the chorus. And the chorus is already fantastic, but that pre-chorus is like insanely good. Yeah, really, really super catchy song. Um, and then Spiller, which isn't, like, Sophie is the feature artist on this track, but Groove Jet? If they say love, why does it feel so good? A really good track. Kind of pulling from, like, that Daft Punk era and that kind of, like, um, you know, Stardust music sounds better with you, those kinds of artists, uh, Mojo with Lady. Kind of pulling similar tropes from the production standpoint of it. And then just having Sophie's impeccable vocals over it is just like a match made in heaven. One of my favourite songs of the 2000s for sure. Uh, and then we'll end on the last two songs which are by the Sugar Babes. I didn't include any Girls Aloud. Damn, that's a bad miss from me. No Girls Aloud on this list. That's a bit of an omission. But okay, we got two Sugar Babes songs which I'm going to put both in A. I think they're both brilliant. Um... Push the button and about you now. Yeah, they're both about A tier, kind of interchangeable, which one I like more on any given day. But um, yeah, this was peak era for pop, like pop girl groups. You know, you had the Spice Girls kind of changing the game in the 90s, but then the 2000s came around and British pop groups were like absolutely all over the place. There were so many Liberty X, uh, Mystique. Uh, obviously, Sugar Babes, Girls Aloud. I mean, there'll be loads that I'm not even naming. All Saints, in fact, too. Um, yeah, the, the, it just it just went out like crazy. There were so many pop girl groups that just came out of nowhere. And yeah, Sugar Babes were definitely one of the best ones, for sure. I should have included Girls Aloud, though. That's a bit of a silly one from me. But this is the tier list. They are the last songs for this entire tier list. An entire 50 songs being ranked from worst to best in tier list fashion and as i've said already there will be some you might not fully recognize and there might be some that you think oh you should have included that and i'm sure i would say i should have as well but i can't go too heavy handed with this because this would be like a two hour long video and i'd be here forever but hopefully you got something out of this some interesting opinions and some maybe recommendations too if there's something you don't recognize here please make your tier list as well put it in the uh you know replies to my tweets or whatever send it me on instagram wherever you follow me would definitely love to see what you guys think of your own tier list and hopefully you've enjoyed this video subscribe if you haven't already have a good day and goodbye